Morning everybody, Rusty from the Rusty Razor got another shave of the day and today we're going to be using Sterling's Haverford. Yep, I was in the mood for some tobacco scents today. Man, it smells really good. It's being used. You can see a lot of it's disappearing there. Yeah, it's a definitely a um, pipe tobacco scent. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. All right, so first use the Astro Blades with the Mercor 34C. Great combination for me. I like that. And then obviously, we have the splash to go with it. So there we go. All right. How's your day going? Well, mine's been like, eh, it's a typical day. Got up early. Yeah, another early day. Wake up and go, ah, stop it. Since they're no longer giving me steroidal injections, you know, it's like, yeah, the pain keeps you awake. But hey, you know, if it is, wasn't for pain, you wouldn't know you're alive, right? Yeah. <laughs> Keep on driving on. As they say, if you can still feel the pain, you can still fight. Yeah. <clears throat> Never give up. Never surrender. Man, smells good. I'd say one thing I would, if I had some uh, sterling black cherry, I'd probably put a, you know, off the, of the splash, I'd probably go trip, trip, put a few drips of that in there, add a little bit of cherry scent to this, make it good. But right now, I don't have any. Maybe someday I'll rectify that problem. <clears throat> That's the other problem I was wondering. The old uh, sciences are still kind of plugged up. <sighs> but it's nice outside, right? Yeah, we're supposed to get some thunderstorms today. You know, like the weather is... We moved into silly season. Thunderstorms and all that fun stuff. Rain. Tornadoes. Yes, we get tornadoes. Was it last year? Yeah, last spring I was. We had a front roll through a big old storm front, and I was watching it come in, and I watched uh, one spin up, and it was like you see the little tail coming down right above your house, and you're like, "Hmm, that's a tornado." <laughs> But it just didn't come down. It's like it kept, by the time the tail got a little bigger, it's like, oh yeah, all right. It would have been hitting the, the town next to us. We're, I'm right on the border of two towns, Des Moines and Pleasant Hill. And I would have seen it. Make my call, let the, the, the storm chaser network know, oh, there's something trying to, farm over here. But, you know, with my back the way it is, I don't know if I'll be doing anything this year. Yeah, we've been watching a bit of TV, too. Binge watching. Hang on a second. Ooh. I think I'm going to sneeze. Thank you! Wow. My brain. Where did my brain go? I think it just fell out someplace. But. Uh, we've been watching this show. Uh, La Brea. Oh my god. What a train wreck this show is. I swear the writers with this show, um, have no, understanding of the survival or, uh, what the flora and fauna were back 10,000 BC, <laughs> like, it was just coming out of the last ice age and stuff's still here and in the, in the, around here yet. Let's go 
boar hunting and like boar hunting you, you like a russian style black boar that you find in europe okay mm -hmm. okay do you know that those things weren't here? <laughs> Got this because it's supposed to take place in California, ten thousand BC. Because you still got smilodons and woolly mammoths and uh, woolly rhinos and you know all the things that were around during that time. Where they all got excommunicado, but. It's like I'm watching this and like, oh boy. <laughs> like, but this is, you know, yeah, it's supposed to be sci-fi. So, what the hell. Whole premise of the show, you know, is that a big sinkhole opens up and swallows up um, part of L.A. And then all these cars and all these people <laughs> dropped them into the uh, different time zone. Like... Into a 10,000 BC, and there's still to survive, and and there's uh, people already here that dropped in from sinkholes before. Have their little civilization, and everybody speaks English. Even the people that were here from before, like okay. <clears throat> and one of them is this, this family unit. You gotta. Son, the mother, and boyfriend are all in here, and then uh, the father, who's an Air Force pilot, he's still back, and he wants to get back to his get to his family in ten thousand BC and rescue him without any knowledge that they're even alive. You know, it's like seriously. <clears throat> And they got a daughter who's an amputee. She lost part of her leg in an accident. So the, the father daughter, you know, they're they're gonna go back, All right? They're gonna go into the the sinkhole from a different location and walk from Seattle to. LA get there okay if you know you're gonna do this what would be the one thing some things that you might want to take with you survival gear uh, dress for the environment you're, you're gonna be going into yeah guy was an Air Force pilot I know it's zoomies and they're like no, no. It's, it's the Air Force. <laughs> if this would have been it was like, ah, a Marine or Army or something, you know, it's like, ah, all right, I gotta, I need a big bore battle rifle ammo. I need survival gear. I need uh, food, fire starting gear. I need a rucksack. I need this, 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 you know, it's like, because I'm going in. Like, Hey, right, let's go. Let's jump in with just our civilian clothing, and you know, all I got is my jeans and tennis shoes and uh, a shirt. Did you bring a knife? Well, why would I do that? Why would I need a knife for it? Okay, just saying. <laughs> oh my god, my wife kind of likes it. She is like, it's kind of a love drama crap in some ways and i'm like okay all right well, this is a show written by somebody who's like i'm gonna i'm gonna go out into nature i'm gonna spend time in nature where are you going we're going down to the down to the park you mean the city park where they mow the lawn and everything you're that's what you call nature it makes sense you're probably writing for this show aren't you <laughs> uh <clears throat> As somebody that grew up in the wilds, I was like, yeah, it's like you, you hear about, oh, it's just Minnesota. 
Well, when I grew up in the 70s, it's like 20 miles away was like uh, the nearest town. And you can go out 10 miles without seeing anything that related to uh, f farming or anything. It's just woods <laughs> with bears and wolves and everything. <clears throat> so, yeah. One of those things where do your best to learn survival skills. It's like every time I went into the woods, every, I mean, every time. So I had my boots, my jeans, and a shirt on. And it depends on the, the weather, too. I might have had a jacket. Always carried a knife and fire starting equipment. Yeah. Yep. Because you never know when something might happen. You might need to have a fire. I still got my knife and this fire starting gear today. Like, uh, be prepared. It's that Boy Scout thing, you know. So... I find it interesting is that uh, you watch this encampment where they all organize. There, everybody's always walking around in circles constantly. I don't know what I'm doing, and nobody's living in shelter. <laughs> like, seriously, you're not having any shelter. Like, okay, I'd be all right. First thing I gotta do, yeah, they got cars and uh, uh, stuff just crashed around the area, but you know, it's like. I'm going to build myself a shelter. Keep the wildlife out. How are we going to survive? How do we start fire? You don't know how to start a fire, huh? With all you need is wood. Yeah. But you got to find the right kind of wood. Yeah. Which... I was like watching the show. Like, okay, I see plenty of appropriate type of trees. I know the thing I'd be looking for is all right. Where the heck is the uh, pine trees at? Need some resin sap. <clears throat> Can also be used. You know, it's like that's what I'm making part of my shelter out of though, the pine boughs. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah, we we started season two. I think we're like through two episodes into season two now. I'm having a hard time with this show. Let's just, just put it that way. <laughs> the reality of it. Yeah, I don't have any problem with you know, the the sci-fi aspect of it. You know, being jumped to a different time zone timeline you know it's like okay uh, i got a feeling this is all caused by a outside group or something which we get hints of but oh one of the guys that's in the show is a navy seal <laughs> he was a navy seal and i was like i'm watching him do this stuff i'm like you weren't a navy seal <laughs> at least the people that uh writing for this show I had no clue what a Navy SEAL could do. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, he'd be the one type of, alright, this is what we gotta do. Now gather around. We're gonna be here for a while. This is what we got to do. And one of the things the SEALs have been trained in is how to survive in the wild. 
<laughs> He'd be all over this crap. Hey! That's the wash machine. Gotta bounce a bit. Yeah, it's one of those things where you put the stuff in you expect it to be, you know? Halfway decently. I'm not too happy with my uh, Wash machine dryer. California specials. Hell, it uses low water usage because, you know, that's California. You know, they mandate that. So, those that live in areas that have lots of water, because we got rivers and everything, and we get this thing called rain on a regular basis. It's like, you got to put it on uh, one setting that uses the most water as possible and then do two cycles. Instead of one cycle to uh, get the soap out of the... Oh, this is ridiculous. So, yeah, it's like you're... Using still the same amount of water if it would like my my old wash machine would just fill it up and then it agitate and you had this open air and you hear the water go <laughs> now so you barely get enough water in, into it at the mac the, the setting that allows the most water in to barely even uh, get anywhere near the top of the uh, clothes so the first couple times I used it I'd put soap in there and. And uh, it would be, um, there, the old Haverford juice. Ooh, that smells good. Come out of there. A little more. All right. And I pull the clothes out, and it'd still be soap. <laughs> like, a little steamy right here. And I'm like, seriously? And you have to go wash it twice more until I figure it out. You know, it's like, all right, you got to do two soak cycles and uh, barely use any soap or else it, it just makes a freaking mess. And then the dryer, it, the dryer, you put it in for an hour, expect to close a load to be dry after an hour. That's no, an hour later, you still got damp clothes. So you got to put it at the, oh, we got to put another for another about half an hour to 45 minutes. So you're doing. Over an hour and a half to get your clothes dry. <clears throat> it's like not an improvement at all. All right, there's a affiliate link down below for the razor company. So if you need anything, uh, when we get to a certain amount, I will uh, probably do another giveaway. So a little kickback for everybody that supports the channel. All right, so Sterling Haverford. Yep, there's your sponsor today, Sterling. Uh, smells good. I like the scent of this stuff. All right, there you go. And we had the first use, the Astro Blades with the Mercor 34C. Excellent little razor for me. It does a great job for my shades. And then we followed up with some Splash from Sterling Haverford. There you go. That's the shave day, everybody. Hope you guys like it. Like and subscribe, share it, friends, and we'll see you next one. Rusty out.